Welcome to the push-pull feeder modeling and 3D printing intro. The feeder is again done in OpenSCAD. It is insanely parametric and I'll just show you uh, the most important parameters here. The obvious choice is the type width. The feeder can be sized, although I have only tested the 8mm tapes. You can switch on and off features you don't want, such as the reel holder. If you don't like it, you can get rid of it. The same with the extrusion mount. Uh, if you want just to screw down the feeder on your table, you can do so. It has screw holes too. But you can also change the width of the extrusion and the height as you like. Some uh, debugging features are also included so you can test how it works. Now the most important options are the make options, what you want to actually create. And you should start out with a test print in order to get your printer specific play because we need to have axles that turn easily but don't wiggle. So this prints a series of nuts with different play and uh, one axle so you can test how the axle plays against the nut and once you have your correct nut you can go to the 3D printing parameters and set the correct play values there. This changes with every filament and print setting, so be sure uh, to first figure out how you want to print it and then do this test. The model can be printed in two phases in order to print it in two colors or on two printers or to print the base first and then the secondary parts where you still can fiddle with the play. We create the model and then export it as STL to be printed in Prusa Slicer here. I'll print the full plate. You see the whole feeder is in one print. And I'll quickly show you what I changed in the standard 0.3 millimeter print settings. As you see what I changed and the values for, a, for this specific print. I also improved the speeds a bit. I roughly uh, added 50% to the above values, only slightly made the non-print moves faster and doubled the first layer speed because I had no problems with that. I also unified the extrusion widths. Make sure you have your diameter set right, otherwise your play won't be okay and also the temperatures. So let's slice that. And this gives us the print time. So for the full plate, you have a bit more than three hours with these settings. But I want to make it in two, two phases because I have two printers. So let's do that and print it. It takes an hour and 45 minutes with two printers, so it's really not so long. I've um, arranged the parts as if it was printed in one go to show you how to assemble. It's really easy. You need no tools, no screws, no springs, nothing. And this shows you how it is mounted on an extrusion. 
This is a V-slot open build extrusion. And you see how the lock actually takes it in. It's important to note that the extrusion is squeezed in, so the mechanical uh, strength is actually given by the squeeze, not by the lock. Need to give a little counter pressure there on the axle and then open the lock. This is the reason why it's very difficult to mount a feeder between two others. You can't access it with a screwdriver or anything. So I wanted a system where I don't need to do anything like that. So I can just insert it there and lock it down. To remove it again, some pressure against it and open the lock and just lift it out. Now let's have a look at the underside, the spent tape shoot. You can also parameterize the bends for your table. And there's also a 3D printed adapter for the light placer users. All you need is a zip tie to get started. Other users can use a aluminium bracket or something. The geometry of the lever actuator is very simple. Here you see the feeder in action. But if you want to know more how to set it up and use it inside OpenPNP, please watch the other video about this new feeder class. That's it. Thank you and cheerio.